Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here, and welcome to a new Q&A video. And this one's done like two weeks after the last one. Basically, I have like 36 pages of these questions. So I'm spacing out and doing a little bit every so often. Some people say, did you quit? No, don't worry, I didn't quit. I just, you know, it's hard to sit down forever and talk about something. But I try to space it out, too, because, you know, he has stuff to... So then there's always videos all the time, too. Um, the first question here, and the thing is, too, I did this already, but I did the, you know, the quick capture thing and didn't work. So I'm starting all over again with this first 15-minute part. Um, who was and has always been your greatest inspiration for becoming an actor and why? If that person is involved in movies, what movies are he and she known for? I'd probably say people that, that I always looked up to who were in film so were John Candy and Chris Farley. Were, that's the kind of acting I like, that kind of... And, you know, sort of silly, but yet they can do, like with John Candy, like in roles like Only the Lonely, how he did m way more serious kind of roles, which is the way I am, too, is I, I really like to do things other than comedy, kind of silly parts, too, and luckily I've been able to do some of that lately, which is cool. That's what I actually really like to do is different kinds of parts, um, not just the same stuff, like the silly kind of Don characters. I don't like doing them very much, just because it doesn't really get to show a whole lot of acting. Um, but I guess John Kenny was known for Uncle Buck and um, National Lampoon's Vacation at the End. He was the guy who worked in the security office and a number of movies. Um, cool Runnings and, like I said, Only the Lonely. And Chris Farley, of course, was from Tommy Boy and um, Black Sheep, Beverly Hills Ninja. Um, next question is, what did you think of Piranha 3D in The Last Exorcism? I thought Piranha 3D was alright. I didn't love it. I liked the director's other movies a bit better. I liked the Last House on the Left. I mean, sorry, the Hills Have Eyes remake quite a bit. I thought it was okay for a remake. Um, I know Piranha 3D was alright. I kind of felt like Jerry O'Connor was the only one in the movie who was actually having act like real fun with the thing. He actually kind of took it over the top and sort of made it really campy. Everyone else was kind of Way, I don't know, no one, he was like the only actor that was acting like that. Um, and, Latin, and the other one was, and what do you think of Last Exorcism? Um, I actually really thought that was pretty good. I mean, I had no problem with it. I, I liked it a lot more than I thought I did, especially for a PG-13 movie. I thought it was pretty well done. It, it wasn't perfect, but I, I did like it. When did you realize you were interested in films and filmmaking? Well, I've pretty much always been interested in films. I've always loved films. Even as a kid, I was always go on Fridays after school to Blockbuster, I remember, back when I went, you know, rented things. I went to Blockbuster every single Friday, would always try and find something that I hadn't seen. I never would like to see the same things. I'd like to always try and find something different. And um, so Blockbuster, I used to really like it. I mean, now I, I don't rent, I don't, I don't know, I, I like to just get what I like and stuff. But back then, too. It was really different with um, getting things because movies didn't come out like they used to. Now, movies in theaters is on DVD three and a half months later, sometimes even less, and you can own the thing, you know, brand new. But when they used to come out, you used to have to, um, they would come out at Blockbuster first, and you couldn't buy them. If you wanted to buy them, you'd have, they would cost usually a hundred bucks. You could buy them from Suncoast and Sam Goody and some of those places. They were like, well, you can get it. We have to order it, but it's going to be $100. And I never did that. I never. There was a couple of things that I really wanted, like, right away. I remember, like, Bill and Ted and certain ones I really wanted. I don't know if there were ever any that came out the same date. I think Hook might have come out the same time. I think every so often a movie would come out the exact same time as rental, but very rarely. It was this big, like, waiting time. That's, that's why Blockbuster used to be so big and why... It, it now there's really it's not like it was because like I was saying you would have to wait all this time to get the thing if you wanted to own it now you know Blockbuster you know has it the exact same dates out for sale every so often I, I if I go on Blockbuster just to see if there's anything out to that I haven't heard of um, it's just some obscure stuff you see some exclusive stuff like some weird movies like the Rob Snyder's new movie and stuff that they're sell that they're renting earlier, but that's only, with, I would say, maybe a few titles a month, but um, that was when I was always interested in films. Filmmaking, I first started liking to, to make films with a friend of mine named Nell. We used to make sort of short, like, skits and stuff in the fourth grade, 
And then I think their parents were really worried we were going to break the camera. It was one of those really big um, VCR cameras. And we used to always have problems with it. Like it was never charged, and then we would get into an argument about it not being charged. And, and then she, she wouldn't have the cord. So we, well, I remember one time it was not, her parents couldn't come back and bring the cord. So it had like a minute of battery life, and we were real, real sucked, and we couldn't do anything with it. And we made a couple little skits, just some weird things. But then I really got interested in doing it, doing the videos when MJ, I met, when MJ got a camera in the seventh grade. At that point, we just never stopped making stuff. Then I bought a camera in the eighth grade, and then we really made a lot of stuff. And a lot of it is online if you want to look at it. I should put some links. I'll put some links under this if you want to see some of the older stuff. Or I could do like a click, click, click here, click this for this. And leave comments on it. It's, it's, it's old stuff. I mean, it's old. It's from when we were in 1997 and stuff. But it's worth looking at. Um, it's right down. So I remember to put those links so you guys can look at them. But I, I think I have a bunch of stuff you can look at. The old original stuff we did. The next question is short and simple. Is MJ your childhood buddy? And yes, I've known MJ since the sixth grade. A friend of mine named Sean Brody, who was actually in the episode of um, Double Timers, if you ever saw that Don and Murph one, has some sound problems, so you can't hear some of it. But he was the person who actually introduced me to MJ. I remember he's like, um, "You should meet this guy" or something. And then we became friends and. Um, the, the whole meeting thing was kind of funny how it happened. I remember on the bus, at first, we just started talking and stuff. Then we used to, like, write these dirty notes, like these dirty notes lists of things. And I was like, MJ, I mean, back then I was calling him Matt, because, you know, he came out now by his name being Matt. I was like, Matt, you should um, give this name, you know, give these notes to your mom. And, you know, we were weird kids. And these were these dirty notes, like you know, condoms, with stupid stuff. And he gave it to his mom, and then um, we got sent to the principal about it, because the mom was like, what is going on here? Why are these kids running? It was me, and a couple other people on the bus writing these things. I don't know what was the matter with us. But then we got sent to the office. And originally, Sean Brody was sent to the office, because they didn't know what Sean. Then I got sent down, and they looked at me like, real mad. And at that point, the principal was like, I don't know why you two are writing these things. I know boys and boys and she don't say all this stuff. It's like, then at some point, she, something happened and she's like, you two should hang out or something. I don't know what happened. But then we gave each other you know, each other's numbers. And from that point, we never stopped hanging out And uh, from then. And um, that was pretty much how it happened. At some point, I want to turn the whole middle school thing into a series or something, like reenact with it. It gets people to come with like us. Because there were you know, a lot of weird situations and incidents in middle school that would make pretty interesting stuff. Very Napoleon Dynamite kind of business. Um, but that was like the one I met him though, and then we've been friends since. Um, why do you call yourself Cool Duder and have you ever traveled outside of America? The Cool Duder thing, I remember um, I wanted, just wanted to put, start putting things up on YouTube. I remember just seeing the thing was like, well, I should just put some things up on here. And we had a bunch of just like online things. So I figured, okay, I'll just start uploading stuff. So I made just a random page. I never really, at that point, didn't know about, you know, people building followings online or any. I didn't notice any of that. So I just made this thing and thought, oh, it would be kind of cool if people saw the stuff. And then it started catching on. And I was kind of, still had that name, Cool Duder, and you couldn't change it. But then, now, like, now I really like it. People, um, it's, it's a way now, too, if you know, if somebody knows you, from online or not, because they say cool dude or something, you know it's someone from online. But that's the main reason. It just was like a silly name that I made it like on the spot that didn't really have any specific meaning. Um, the next question is, Sean, you're my hero, man. Love your work and love the Donna Murphy episode. Your collection is killer, and I had three questions for you. First, when you started making your own movies, was it all experimental, or did you research first? Second, Dawn or Day of the Dead? Which story do you think came out better? Third, well, I just want to say we're not worthy. Have a good one, bud. I would say um, for, like, not really experiment, we just sort of wanted to see what YouTube was like. Um, but the very beginning, though, what we did was we made, in the summer of 2004, we, I was kind of, MJ went away to the uh, Philippines, where his stepmother's family was, and he was away for, like, three weeks, and I didn't know what to do. 
And at that point, we're hanging out all the time. And um, I was thinking, you know, we have all these videos. I should I just thought, you know, I was noticing people putting things up online. This is before YouTube. This is just random, like, sites like Angel Fire and all these kind of things. And Zippy Videos was one of the original ones I used to put stuff on. But I made a site called Friends Pages. And we put just, you had to put these, you couldn't make clickable links. So everybody had, had to put copy and paste the link to go to this. I don't know if anyone now was watching even back then. I don't know if anyone followed from that long. If you did, thanks. But, because in the beginning our stuff was really cheesy. But, um, still sort of is, though. But you had to copy and paste the link. It was a nightmare. And then we put up the zippy video things. And something about, if you copy and pasted the link, Angel Fire would get pissed off. And it was like, you can't do this. So then they shut down the pages. And we're like, what are we going to do? Then we started doing the zippy video things. And they had these limits of like five megabytes. Back then, like, quality of video sucked. There was no HD or good quality. So everything was in these small block sizes. Then we made Dot and Murph. And then um, on the Friends Pages site, though, did pretty well, though. It got like a couple hundred thousand views in the summer. So we're like, oh, we should keep doing this, because we used to promote a lot on the Pulling Dynamite's message board, if anyone remembers that. And then we made the Donna Murph site, and then did pretty well with that. Haven't done anything on there in years, like two and a half years now. But we used to do stuff on Donna Murph, then we started doing the YouTube, and then things really caught on. But, um, no, we never really had any plan with it. Because in the very beginning, when we first started, like I said, nobody was really doing the online video thing. You would sporadically see some little silly videos, but it wasn't the norm like now, like with YouTube and stuff. Back then, it just wasn't what people were really doing. And the second was for Dawn of the Dead or Day of the Dead. I would say, um, I liked, um, I liked them both the same. I like a few things of Day of the Dead a little bit better. Um, just some of the underground stuff and just a few of the zombie sequences and stuff, but I don't know, it, that's a really tough one. Both of them are just were definitely worth watching. Um, when you were a teenager, how did you get money to buy films? Was it? I first started working like uh, and earning money and stuff probably when I was about 18 or so. But before that, I used to just like every so often was allowed to get a few things in like a month. I didn't buy things like I used to. Like I would get maybe a month when I was a kid. I would get. I remember I used to go to Suncoast, and I think every couple of Fridays I was allowed to spend like twenty dollars. And I would always get those like six ninety nine, seven ninety nine tapes of random horror movies and random movies and stuff. And that was how I used to have a lot of stuff. Now I have like so few VHS after the move. But um, and then I I every so often was allowed to get things as a kid. Then we get a lot of stuff for like Christmas and stuff. Now I, I buy stuff all the time like a crazy person. It's like my DVD addictions. <laughs> but you know, I, but I you know now I've earned money from doing films and from working some jobs and then f through YouTube and things like that. But I never really, um, as a kid, like I said, I, I didn't, I wasn't the kind of DVD per person buying like I, as a kid, like I do now. And even now I don't buy as much as I used to. Just because I really like to only get, like I don't want to buy a whole bunch of random VHS and, I mean, DVDs anymore. I like to get, usually like to get a lot more Blu-rays now. Um, the next question is, what do you think of the new wave of French horror cinema like Frontiers, Switchblade Romance, and Martyrs? Thanks, keep up the great work. Um, I haven't seen the Switchblade Romance or Frontiers. I own Frontiers, though, but I've seen Martyrs. It's a very twisted movie, but very well done. I have I have really liked those movies. I also liked Inside, that they did. Um, can you make a living acting? Um, if you consistently are working... And if, if that's what you want to do and you set out to continue to work and, you know, keep going, you know, talking to people online and making connections and stuff, you can. And it, you build up, you know, you start out in smaller things and you just keep growing up and up and up. And that's what I've been, been doing lately. Um, my next question is, what is your favorite Goosebumps episode? My favorite is actually a two-part of One Day at Harland, Greetings from Holland, and Thanks for the Entertainment You Gave to the World. Um, I actually liked the Weekend at Horror one, Land one a lot. I always thought it was kind of funny how it had a real kind of cheesy, like the, it almost looked like they went out in the middle of the woods with like just some cheap planks of wood from Home Depot and painted them up and made the Horror Land. It was real, like there was not a lot 
to it. It was real cheesy, but I like that. I also like The Haunted Mask. Um, that one was good, the first one. There's a couple other ones that I really liked. I liked Afraid of the Dark, though, a little bit more when I think about it, because there was, Afraid of the Dark, there were so many episodes that I liked, and Afraid of the Dark also had way more budget to it with um, its episodes and stuff. Anyway, though, um, this is all for this part, but I'll see you guys soon with the next part. Thanks a lot for watching and for subscribing, and definitely check out the old videos. I, like I said, they're cheesy, they're strange, but, you know, it'd be fun if you guys want to just sort of step back and see old stuff that I doubt anyone really watched, because it's like way down out of the 900 something videos that are on here. It's like in the very beginning of stuff. It's, a, it's Like I said, it's cheesy stuff, but leave comments, let me know what you guys think, and um, I'll see you guys later. Okay? Bye!